Hello everyone, how's it going? Do you ever experience low blood pressure? Well, how low is too low? What are the symptoms? What causes low blood pressure? And when should you talk to your doctor? If that sounds interesting to you, then keep watching. Now, blood pressure is determined by the amount of blood the heart pumps and the amount of resistance to blood flow in the arteries. Now, low blood pressure isn't given as much attention as high blood pressure, but it can still be of concern. Well, what is considered low blood pressure? Well, blood pressure reading lower than 90 over 60 is considered low. However, what may be low for one person may not be low for another person. Now, some people experience low, pr low blood pressure more in the summer. Well, why is that? And what does systolic and diastolic mean? Well, we're going to talk about that in a bit. But first, let's talk about um, some of the symptoms. Now, some people experience low blood pressure, and they experience no noticeable symptoms. Others experience uh, blurred or fading vision, dizziness or lightheadedness, uh, fainting, fatigue, trouble concentrating, and nausea. Now, what can cause low blood pressure? Well, there's two types of hypotension that are common in older adults, one being orthostatic hypotension. It's also called uh, postural hypotension because a lot of times the blood pressure will drop um, when, with a change of position. So there's a sudden blood pressure drop when the person goes from sitting or laying down to standing. This can actually happen because of dehydration, uh, because of long-term bed rest, pregnancy, and certain medical conditions, especially those who have heart conditions or heart valve conditions. Also, those with hormone-related diseases or endocrine conditions or disorders may also suffer from low blood pressure. Now, it is normal for the blood pressure to drop when we change position, but it shouldn't stay low for longer than three minutes. The second type of hypotension that's very common with older adults is called postprandial hypotension, and this usually occurs one to two hours after eating. It happens more with people who suffer from high blood pressure or if they have an autonomic nervous system disease like Parkinson's. There's also neurally mediated hypotension that happens after standing for a long period of time. Mostly that affects uh, young adults and children. They think it may be some kind of a miscommunication between the heart and the brain. There's also something called multiple system atrophy with orthostatic hypotension. It's a rare disorder. Um, it affects the nervous system which controls involuntary functions like the blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, and digestion. It's actually associated with having high blood pressure um, while lying down. Now there are certain medications um, that are used to treat high blood pressure, heart failure, neurological problems, and depression that can also cause uh, low blood pressure. It can also be caused by some over-the-counter and herbal um, types of medicines, so it's, that's why it's important to always tell your doctor everything that you are taking. Also, a lack of nutrients in the diet can cause low blood pressure. If someone has low levels of B12, folate, and iron, it can keep the body from producing enough red blood cells so they may become anemic. So that can cause their blood pressure to come down. Well, next we're going to discuss uh, when we should talk to the doctor, what treatment options are available, and what lifestyle changes may help. But before we move on to that, I'd like to remind you to please like and subscribe if you're enjoying today's information. Also, make sure you check out the links for product information, uh, product suggestions, uh, and also you can see where I've gathered the information for today's video. Feel free to leave a comment, too, if you have something you'd like to share on this topic. So when should you reach out to your doctor? Well, if you notice symptoms that are affecting your life and actually disrupting your usual routine of activities, you definitely want to reach out to your doctor. It can be a sign of an underlying health condition, especially when it drops suddenly or it occurs with symptoms. Even a small drop going from 110 systolic to 90 systolic can actually be dangerous because it can cause dizziness and fainting, which could lead to a fall and possibly a serious injury. Now, big drops can actually be life-threatening. Um, they're usually caused by uncontrolled bleeding, a severe infection, or an allergic reaction. Extremely low blood pressure can lead to a condition known as shock. And the symptoms for that would be confusion, especially in older adults, cold, clammy skin, a decrease in skin coloration, rapid, shallow breathing, weak and rapid pulse. And that is an emergency situation um, because severe low blood pressure can actually cause, um, it can actually reduce the body's oxygen levels, which could lead to heart and brain damage. 
Now it is normal for um, our blood pressure to vary throughout the day depending on body position, breathing, what we're eating or drinking, medications we take, our physical condition, stress, and the time of day. Usually at night is when our, our blood pressure is the lowest. Now according to the American Heart Association, normal blood pressure is usually lower than 120 over 80. So what is this systolic and diastolic? Well, the systolic is that upper number, that first number you see. That's the pressure in the arteries when the heart beats. The diastolic is that bottom number, second number, and it shows the pressure in the arteries when the heart rests between beats. Now, if it turns out that one of your medications is the problem, your doctor may actually have you stop taking that medication, uh, change you to a different medication, or he may possibly just change the dosage of your medication. But you definitely don't want to make any of those changes without speaking with your doctor first. Well, why do people maybe experience uh, low blood pressure more in the summer? Well, in the summertime, there's more chance of dehydration and heat exhaustion. And dehydration actually causes blood volume to decrease. And when the body's dealing with heat, it actually causes the blood vessels to widen. And that actually helps the body to manage temperature, but also causes the blood pressure to come down. That's why it's so important to make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, um, possibly even some electrolyte beverages if you're out in very warm conditions. You also want to avoid prolonged exposure to the sun. Make sure you're wearing lightweight clothing and really try to avoid strenuous activity during the hottest part of the day. If you are going to be working out in very warm conditions, you want to make sure you take plenty of breaks. But even if someone isn't even dealing with heat exhaustion, they could wind up being dehydrated if they wind up having um, fever, vomiting, or severe diarrhea. Sometimes just an overuse of diuretics could lead to dehydration. Some people find that if they increase their salt intake, that can help them. Of course, you wouldn't want to eat a whole lot of salt all at once. Do you try, want to try to spread that salt intake throughout the day? Some suggestions I found from one uh, article was canned beans, canned tuna, cottage cheese, olives, salted roasted nuts. And if you're concerned about uh, having enough B12 and folate, you could try eating some fortified cereals, and that may help. So if you do experience low blood pressure very often, you want to make sure that when you're laying down, squatting, or sitting, when you go to get up, that you get up very slowly so you can avoid losing your balance, perhaps falling. Something that helps some people is to wear compression socks or an abdominal binder. Um, these actually may help bring up the blood pressure by narrowing blood vessels. Now some people can tolerate an abdominal binder a lot better. Just make sure before you order one that you measure um, the widest part so that for women that would be the hips and for men that would be the waist. But I'll leave a link below that you can check out. So if none of these remedies work and you're dealing with a long-term issue, your doctor actually may prescribe a medication that can reduce the ability of the blood vessels to expand, which will raise the blood pressure. So low blood pressure can actually be caused by something as simple as dehydration, but it could also be a serious medical condition. But even if it's just dehydration, um, it could cause symptoms that could lead to a fall. So it's very important because we'd want to avoid serious injuries. Now, if you experience low blood pressure with no symptoms or just very mild symptoms, it rarely requires any treatment. But if you have low blood pressure with symptoms, you definitely need to be evaluated. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's information, and I hope to see you in the next video where we'll discuss another way we can improve our health.